kisha magumu sana nimepitia nikajaribu tafuta msaada sikupata nikaendea wanadamu mwisho wa kanidhara kumbe msaada wa mwanadamu unatoka kwa Mungu nilijua wapo wenye haki ya kubarikiwa tu kumbe baraka ni haki ya kila Nimebadili wazo langu na mwelekea Mungu. Kwake msaada wangu unapatikana. Msaada wa mwanadamu ni wa muda mfupi. Na mizamu yangu kubariki wewe. Wakati ni Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, indeed, it is our time to be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There is nothing impossible with God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast tonight. This is Dr. Flo coming to you live from a WAVN 
a voice of victory. Hallelujah. And we are continuing in uh, the series of Wonders of Sacrifice. And this is part two. And uh, the scripture reading um, uh, was uh, Genesis chapter number eight, verse number 20 through uh, 22. And I'm going to read that in the Amplified. And um, I love the way it says it in the Amplified. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is Genesis chapter number 8, verse number 20, all the way to 22. And the Bible says, And Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of everything ceremonially, clean animal, and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, a soothing, satisfying scent. And the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intent, strong inclination, desire of man's heart is wicked from his youth. And I will never again destroy every, every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So sacrifice has the power to break yokes and curses upon a land or in people's lives. The whole world was under the curse of the Lord. We were all in bondage as a result of the sin of Adam until Jesus became a curse for us by sacrificing himself. Hallelujah. And we see that in Galatians chapter number 3, verse 13. Everyone walks on in darkness, totally enslaved to poverty, sorrow, and barrenness. The power to succeed has been swallowed up as a result of the prevailing curse. The continuous effort of man to make it proves votive. Talking about curses, it is a verbal pronouncement upon a man, a thing or a place that arrests productive living or performance. Hallelujah. It is a spiritual embargo that makes men become miserable. A curse is like placing a siege upon a man. Nobody can thrive in a cursed land. A curse is an empowerment to fail. A cursed land is where nothing works. So in the above passage of scripture, before now there was a prevailing curse of God upon the land. This was what Noah was confronted with. Virtually everything had been destroyed by the flood. The question is, how will Noah begin again? How will he be bring something out of nothing? All around him was just flood and later dry land. There was nothing he could do as a man to turn things around. At such a time, you need a siege breaker. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You need a siege breaker. Suddenly, he remembered to offer sacrifice to God. And when he did, there was a divine intervention. Hallelujah. Why? Because sacrifice is a siege breaker. Whenever God sees it, he responds. It was a great sacrifice on his part 
to offer every clean beast to God at such a time. But because he must get God to lift the curse, he had to worship God with a sacrificial offering. I perceive he knows how to walk with God. He needed God very badly. So he entered into the covenant of sacrifice. God smelled a sweet savor as Noah offered the burnt offerings to him. At that moment, his sacrifice began to speak and God had to change his mind. He couldn't stand all that Noah had offered to be wasted without a result. So he reversed the curse. God said, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. That is amazing. The strength of curses was broken at the offering of sacrifice to God. Your sacrifice can move God to turn things around. Hallelujah. Now, how would Noah have planted and expected to reap if he had not sacrificed? How would he ever be free from toiling if the curse had not been lifted? There are so many people laboring and toiling in a cursed land today. Some are in a relationship with a cursed man, woman. How will you ever produce without you breaking the curses by sacrifice? Has anyone told you that you can't come out of a curse? The Lord said, your sacrifice can break the curse. God's blessing would not have come upon Noah's life and his family if he had not offered great sacrifices. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 1, the Bible says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Hallelujah. And that's in Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 1. So sacrifice moves God, the heart of God, to reverse any form of negative pronouncement upon a man or a family. Do you know it is possible to be working in an organization that is under a curse? That is why nothing seems to be working. Some people will work and work and yet will not have anything to show for it. Friends, curses are real. Oh, but the power to break it is much more real. Hallelujah. Your sacrifice has a way of forcing the blessing out of the mouth of God upon your life. You could not just stop blessing Noah the moment he offered a painful offering to him. In Genesis chapter number 9, verse 1, and verse 7, and verse 11, the Bible says, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And you... Be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Hallelujah. So again and again, God was reaffirming to Noah his blessing and covenant just because of the sacrifice. There is no sacrifice that is little in the sight of God as long as it touches your heart. Now, have you ever wondered the kind of stress this man and his children would have gone through in order to offer all of these sacrifices? To get God working for them? How was he able to kill an elephant, for example? 
What about other giant-sized animals he offered to God? The scripture says he sacrificed every clean beast. So no one kind of beast was spared. So you can imagine what they would have gone through. No wonder God responded with showers of blessings upon him and his family. From that day forward, Noah and his family entered into the joy and blessings of God. The fear of death and failure disappeared. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So your sacrifice rejoices the heart of God. When sacrifice is offered, the power of God is released, which compels the Spirit of God to go into action. The meaning of this is that angels are released into assignment on behalf of the person. And who can keep in bondage a man that God has purposed to set free? Your sacrifice is what makes God think about you to decorate your life with beauty. And that exactly shall be your experience in the name of Jesus. Let's take a look at what happened between David and his three mighty men. Hallelujah. In 2 Samuel chapter number 23, verse number 15 to 17, the Bible says, And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. Hallelujah. So when you offer sacrifice, it is equivalent to the shedding of blood, which is the reason God forgives our sins and releases his grace for healing. You will discover that your sacrifice is not what anyone can embezzle or eat up. The harvest of your sacrifice cannot be lost in transit. David knew it was no longer ordinary water that was being given to him. He could see the blood of the man in it. That sacrifice in your hand is life. The life of every animal is in the blood. Hallelujah. In Leviticus chapter number 17, verse number 11. And let's go ahead and read that scripture. Leviticus chapter number 17, verse number 11. And we're going to read from the Amplified. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Leviticus chapter number 17 and verse uh, 11. And the Bible says in the Amplified, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life which it represents. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So what blood transfusion does to everyone who needs blood to survive is what sacrifice does to anyone who needs to come out of seemingly impossible situations in life. So try it. And watch how the Lord will respond in your case. These David's men risked their lives and so they were greatly honored. The cheapest way to be decorated with honor in life is by sacrifice. Beloved, do not joke with sacrifice. It works. I see every curse holding you back in life broken into pieces in the name of Jesus. 
you will have results to show for your service unto God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, sacrifice, point number two. Sacrifice commands open heaven. Hallelujah. Remember, we are in part two of the wonders of sacrifice. And this is point number two. Sacrifice commands open heavens. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 22, verse 11 and verse 15 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Hallelujah. So from the scriptures above, we understand that sacrifice is the master key for open heaven. And when your heaven is opened, you will experience the blessing of God Almighty. Open heaven is the desire of all men, but few enjoy it. When heaven is closed upon a man, he will live a miserable life. Everything will be against him. It is a curse that heaven is closed against a person. Hallelujah. Now let us read Deuteronomy chapter number 28 verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter number 28 verse number 23. And the Bible says, the heaven which is over your head shall be bronze, giving no rain and blocking all prayers. And the earth which is under you, iron, hard to plow and yielding no produce. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter how many rich people are surrounding him. He will always be forgotten by those he should that should help him. He may be succeeding in several interviews, yet none of them will turn out to a job. If you find yourself in this situation, all you need is a sacrifice in your hand and the heaven above you shall be opened. Now remember, no one can bribe God to open the heaven upon him. It is the action generated by the insight you accept that determines the result you will get. Every great move creates great news. When it is time, when it is time for Abraham's heaven to be opened, God put a test to him and he passed. Hallelujah. You will not fall in the race of life. Praise the name of the Lord. When it was time for Abraham's heaven to be opened, God put a test to him and he passed. Hallelujah. So you will not fail in the race of life. Praise the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter number 22, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So sacrifice opens heavens. Sacrifice compels an open heaven. It is the divine key that unlocks the heaven's treasures upon a man any time any day. Hallelujah. It wasn't Abraham who initiated the action. God did. And you know from the passage above, when heaven becomes opened, God pours you out a blessing. And when the blessing of God comes upon a man, such a man is made for life. For the blessing of God is the marker or the maker of men. Financial struggle will give way to plenty. Scarcity will give way to surplus. His life will become an envy of everyone around. He will no longer be at the mercy of anyone to survive. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So God demanded a sacrifice from Abraham because it was time for Abraham to change levels. It wasn't Abraham who initiated the action, but God did. God can initiate a sacrifice. God can initiate a sacrificial giving service in your church because he knows more than you know yourself. He knows your need and how you can get an answer to it more than you do. If he asked you to make a sacrifice, it is because you are due to a new level. He could see that you never that he could see that you need a ladder out of the valley of life into your promised land. Hallelujah. Only sacrifice in your hands can provide you with such a ladder. So he, so he moves you to offer to him a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are so many people in the low places of life who ought to have graduated, got married, finished their buildings, and stopped giving birth to children who have not even started at all by reason of certain powers hindering them. Now, I command that every grip of the enemy on your life be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It was not a sweet experience for Abraham to sacrifice his son that he loved. But he had to obey God, so he took his son and headed straight for Moriah, to the place of God that had commanded, to offer him as a sacrifice. And at the end, he became the father of many nations. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in Genesis chapter number 22, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. In the sight of God, the action of Abraham in the above scripture showed that he had offered to God a remarkable sacrifice. God was moved. He was deeply touched to see a man offer up what he had waited to receive for 25 years. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And I imagine the action, how God turned himself to the right and to the left and screamed, Abraham, Abraham. The Bible records that the voice of the Lord came unto Abraham the second time. In Genesis chapter number 22, verse number 11 to 15, the Bible says, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time. Hallelujah. In the scripture, we read that God speaketh once and twice we heard that all power belongs to God. But here, God sounded twice from heaven unto Abraham. Abraham, Abraham. The heaven became opened and he could hear God clearly. I perceived the way and manner by which God was calling him or calling that name made the angels to tremble before God. I can imagine them saying, Lord, take it easy. Lord, take it easy. They were afraid. They hadn't seen God deeply moved in that manner before. They could feel the painting. They could feel, I take that back, they could feel the panting. Hallelujah. They could feel the panting. Praise the name of the Lord. Abraham's action could not just be overlooked. The only son he waited for 25 years to receive from God, and now God demanded for it, and yet he did not hesitate to give him up? Hallelujah. Again, I imagine God turned himself around again to the right and to the left in search of what to use to swear, but he just couldn't find anything that is potent enough or as big and mighty as he is. So he had to turn to himself, probably beating his chest and said, By myself have I sworn. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter number 22, verse 16, the Bible says, and, and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Hallelujah. The word of God revealed that because he could not swear to, by anything greater, he swore by himself. As we see in Hebrews chapter number 6, verse number 13. Hallelujah. You see, after swearing by himself, then he began to pronounce irrevocable blessings upon Abraham and his seeds, saying in Genesis chapter number 22, verse number 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So sacrifice compels the release of divine blessing that empowers a man for unbeatable success in life. Hallelujah. Beloved, till today, every child of God still stands on that blessing. It was so strong. It came out so strong. That is what sacrifice does. It provokes open heaven. You don't need to languish in lack, sickness, and nakedness. There is a way out of every stubborn problem of life. You were not born with it, so you cannot die with it. But if you keep quiet and do not consider to take an action as you read this solution, then, or as you hear this solution, then you are responsible for whatever happens to you thereafter. So when a man is under a closed heaven, he is under siege. Nobody will want to help him even though he has people who could help him all around. His income will be fixed, yet he will be having increased expenses. Even though he is a graduate, he will not get a job. He will suffer regular breakdown of properties and equipment that take away the little money remaining. He will be growing lean without him fasting. Such a man will be naked and full of frustration all the time. As a student, he cannot get admission into higher institution irrespective of the high scores in many exams. So when a business is under a closed heaven, there will be no new contracts no matter how hard the man tries. This will lead the man to be spending his savings and then his capital until the business becomes grounded. This will ultimately result in loss of customers. Hallelujah. So when a family is under a closed heaven, there will be constant quarrels between the husband and the wife and even between the children over nothing. There will be no new babies being born. No one will be getting married. Wives will suddenly become barren. People will be dying regularly. Sickness and disease will be common to almost every member. There will always be events that siphon. Now when it comes, you can't escape riches. The blessing empowers you to succeed. Whatever you do becomes successful. It is defined as an empowerment to succeed. The blessing of God is what swallows up the curse and the misery in a man's life, thereby making his life beautiful and very attractive. I see you enjoy the blessing from now forward. The Apostle Paul, an anointed man of God, a man of mighty signs and wonders, knew he was carrying a blessing in his bowel that can turn any man's destiny around. But it, but this blessing had to be provoked by sacrifice. And this exactly was what the Philippian church did. There is power to set at liberty in the spirit of the Apostle Paul this power can compel what they needed for their transformation. Suddenly, understanding came upon the Philippian church, 
and they gave to the Apostle Paul sacrificially. Now, ye Philippians, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when money such as hospital bills, funerals, and major repairs that could have been avoided, such families will experience feeling of insecurity and tension. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Apostle Paul, when he is talking to the Philippian church, he was telling them that you know that in the beginning of the gospel, money was cursed. Hallelujah. So when you see all of these or any of these at work in your life, you need to take a sacrifice in your hand to God and offer it. Look for a project in your church or a need in the life of your pastor or any family in need that you know in the church and sow this seed. You will certainly break the siege and the heaven will be opened. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So when, so sacrifice provokes the release of God's blessing upon a man. And this blessing of God is strong and powerful. It is a divine force that pushes a man into God's own inheritance. It is the spirit of God in the word of God that destroys all barriers in the path of success of such a man. In Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 22, the Bible says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. And in Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 15 to 19, the Bible says, I departed from Macedonia. No church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Apostle Paul was talking to the Philippian church. And the Apostle Paul acknowledged that what they gave to him was indeed a sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. When they did, the next thing he did was to open his mouth and begin to pour out the blessing upon them. In Philippians chapter number 4 verse 19, But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So each time you offer sacrifices to God, the blessing is poured out onto you. This blessing is not a material thing. It is not cars, houses, clothes, healing, or promotion. All these are the effect of the blessing. The blessing is what produces all of these. The blessing is an aura. It is the ability of God upon you to replace whatever is missing in your life. It is a divine presence. It is the spirit of God that comes upon a man. When Abraham sacrificed to God, the heaven was opened and the blessing was poured unto him. Friends, you are not doing yourself any good by never daring to deny yourself of certain things in order to make God 
Step into your situation. Think of how many years you have lived and where you are now. Don't place a lid of limitation on your life by living a life of complacency and never sowing life. You can change the tune of the music if only you can dare to give. Sensitive believers don't wait for sacrificial offerings to be called before they respond to it. They just swing into doing it when they dislike what they are going through. There are things angels will never do for you. You have to consciously take a sacrificial seed in your hand and destroy every satanic network clamping down your finances and that won't let you experience the rain of God's blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That is so powerful. And uh, we have come to the end of our podcast tonight uh, and the end of part two of our series of Wonders of Sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. And I uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. May God bless you. And uh, before we go, if you do not know Jesus Christ, please pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Behold, I come before your throne of grace asking that you forgive my sins. I ask that you set me free from the bondage of sin. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I pray that, Lord, may you take my life and do something magnificent with it. I pray, (coughs) excuse me, I pray, Lord Jesus, that as of today, I am a new creation. I am a new creature. I have a new name. And I thank you that, Lord, even as you died on the cross for me, that today I am born again and I am now going to be a disciple of you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will guide me to a good Bible-based church and that, Father God, you are going to place laborers and shepherds in my path who are going to teach me all understanding and knowledge of the Word of God and of the mysteries of the Kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life for me on the cross. From today, I am born again, and I am a new creation. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. And I pray that you will fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me the gift of speaking in other tongues. I bless you, Lord Jesus, and I pray all this believing in your holy name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for praying that wonderful prayer. You are now born again. You are a new creation. Behold, the old is gone. And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did um, five minutes before this podcast. And it doesn't matter what you did even before you prayed this prayer. Now that you prayed that prayer, you are a new creation and you are born again. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast tonight. And may you have a wonderful and blessed night. And remember, there is power in the word.